Indians are rushing to sign up for COVID-19 vaccinations as the coronavirus crisis rages out of control. From today, adults over the age of 18 can register, but the plan has already run into trouble. States, including the country's richest, Maharashtra, say they simply can't cope. It's also been another day of record infections. India has also passed the grim milestone of 200,000 COVID-19 deaths. Scenes like this are becoming familiar across India. Families of COVID-19 patients are desperate to get medical oxygen. Helpless hospital staff can only say there's none. For the past week, the coronavirus has killed more than 2,000 Indians each day. But there are serious doubts about the official death toll. Crematoriums are operating round the clock. Some are setting up in parks and parking lots just to cope with the surge. Delhi's chief minister says people are falling sick more severely and for longer. That's adding to pressure on the health care system already on the brink of collapse. International help is arriving. A first shipment of medical aid from Britain arrived, including 100 ventilators. The U.S. has also promised sustained help. From Europe to Asia, much-needed oxygen supplies, tests and protective gear have also been promised. But the COVID storm is far from over. And it's not just India that's at risk. Experts have warned that the Asia-Pacific is susceptible to contagion from the highly infectious strains of COVID-19 seen across the country. Ishan Garg joins us live now from New Delhi. Ishan, are there even enough shots to expand the vaccination program in India? Well, the quick answer to that is no. When India started its vaccination drive in January this year, it wanted to inoculate 300 million people by the end of July. But so far, it's been only able to vaccinate about 1.2 million people. That's people who've got both their shots. In the past few months, several people have turned up to vaccination centers only to be turned back uh, by the authorities saying that they have simply run out of shots. Uh, people who have got their first doses, their second doses have been delayed. And at such a time, India is going to add about potentially 1 billion more beneficiaries. Experts are saying that uh, India does not have the capacity to vaccinate so many people and neither will va uh, opening up vaccination to so many people be helpful in crushing this second wave of the pandemic. Now, the government says that it has... Uh, cleared a financial assistance of about more than half a billion dollars for domestic production. Uh, but this is going to have repercussions ac uh, across the world as well, because companies like the Serum Institute of India not only make jabs for Indians, they also make jabs for countries worldwide, so for example, Canada. And now that their uh, supplies are going to be more diverted towards India, it's highly likely that uh, their supply towards international facilities like COVAX and Gavi and other countries like Canada is going to be impacted. So what India needs to do right now, experts say, is import more vaccines from companies like Pfizer and Moderna, and perhaps that will be more helpful uh, to uh, vaccinate about close to 1.2 billion people here in India. Meantime, Ishan, Delhi has warned that more people are staying sick for longer during this wave, and that's adding pressure to hospitals. Yes, absolutely. It is. I've been speaking to doctors who are working 14 hours to 16 hour shifts in Delhi just in the past two weeks. And they're saying that the second wave, the newly uh, discovered uh, doubly mutated variant of the virus is bringing all sorts of difficulties. This time around, doctors are also seeing uh, younger patients. The idea earlier was that younger people are more uh, are less vulnerable to the virus and older people are more vulnerable. This time around, they're also seeing oxygen shortages uh, because people's oxygen are dipping rather drastically. Somebody might be okay just in the morning and by the evening, uh, their oxygen levels drop to about 70%, which can be fatal 
uh, to a lot of people. Uh, doctors are also saying that this time around, people are taking longer to recover. And all these factors combined are putting a massive pressure on the healthcare system. Uh, there have been reports about doctors who are going into uh, trauma, people who are getting uh, disturbed mentally because of the shifts they have been pulling and uh, the kind of ghastly scenes they are seeing every single day. So this is having not only an impact in material terms, but also in psychological terms on the country's healthcare infrastructure. Ishan, some of the world's biggest firms have operations in India. How is the crisis affecting them? Well, the first thing that's happened is that the workload has increased significantly. There are several companies where people have fallen sick because of COVID-19, and they are now facing continuity issues. These are companies uh, which uh, specialize in the service sector, and their clients are often based in uh, countries in Europe or in America, where the crisis might not be as bad as it is in the country. And because of that, they're having to deal with significant work pressure. Now, bigger companies like Infosys and Goldman Sachs, and these companies, have the resources to be able to um, uh, to be able to help their people who are working there. A lot of these companies are now committing to vaccinating all of their uh, workforce. But that brings us to the question uh, that we were earlier speaking about. Will they have access to the vaccine when India opens it up to more than 1 billion people? And the answer, perhaps, is only time will tell. Thank you very much, Ishan. Ishan Garg, they're reporting from New Delhi.